Hello and welcome to episode 46 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is March 30th, 2020. As usual, I begin with what I'm wearing and these are two rather special things. Um, this is a little Möbius scarf or Möbius loop um, that I once knit. Um, it's my own design and I originally meant to write it down as a pattern, but I never got around to doing that. Um, I love thinking of patterns and, and designs and I'm really bad with writing things down. So far, I've only ever written one um, pattern down. I'll talk about that later. But this is something that uh, was supposed to be um, a, a design, an original design. The pattern is not new. Everybody knows it, I think. Um, it's a very beautiful pattern and I wanted to see what it looks like if it was knit up in a Möbius. So I started in the middle with a Möbius cast on and um, that means once when you knit it, it grows into both directions at once. And what you can tell is that one has these twisted stitches and the other side does not have twisted stitches because I only twisted the knit stitches and not the purse stitches. So if I fold it down like this, um, you can see the twisted stitches again and you have the same pattern lying on top of one another and uh, and you have this um, typical um, uh, twist in the scarf which I really like a lot and um, yeah it was just a quick little knit and maybe one day I will write it down and maybe also um, try it out in different sizes and um, maybe with a wider circumference or maybe a bit higher, different yarn. Anyway, so this is a prototype. And the jumper I'm wearing is um, really special because I knit it years and years ago, pre-Ravelry times. So it's both of these are not on Ravelry, but I knit it for my son. When my son was a teenager, he loved knitted uh, pullovers and jumpers and um, what I would do is I would take him to the yarn shop and he could pick the color and the yarn he wanted and then I would knit a gauge swatch and try different patterns so he could pick the pattern and then he would tell me which pattern and what kind of design he wanted. So he had very clear ideas about how long, how wide, and uh, lots of different things that he liked. So the colors in this pullover are more the colors that he used to wear. They're not my typical colors, but um, at some point my son stopped wearing his knitted jumpers because they were too warm. Uh, once he was grown, he, he's just never cold, so he doesn't need any knitted pullovers. Um, so he gave them back to me and what I did with this one, it's a yarn by Lana Grossa and it's not supposed to be machine washed, but the jumper was too big for me. So I put it in the washing machine, hoping it would felt just a little bit and it worked out really well. So the, the sleeves are just a tiny bit short, but that's okay. The overall length is perfect. The width is perfect. And um, the pattern is a kind of brioche pattern. It's um, not where you where you stack the stitches on top of each other, but they're sort of, um, I don't know, can't really explain how you do it, but it's, it's a really nice pattern that I've knit before. And um, yeah, so it, it felt it just enough um, to be a bit smaller. It still fits me and it, um, it means it's even warmer than it was before. And I really like it. I usually just wear it at home as it's not my really my colors, but I like it and it's warm and it reminds me of my son. So that's good. <laughs> and uh, where did the, ah, here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. And with this, I think I've gone through all my winter pullovers and jackets that I have knitted. So far, I mean, I'm still producing more, but um, the ones that I have now, I've all shown them on the podcast. And I hope that by next week, the weather will have changed a bit and it, it, um, it gets warmer. So I still have some of my summer and spring things that I can show on the podcast. And um, I've been thinking that once I've 
shown you everything that I have. Um, I can either go back and um, repeat things because some of the things it's a long time ago that I showed them, maybe you haven't all seen them. Um, but I can also, I will also start wearing things that I own, that I wear, that I have not knitted myself. So you might think I only wear things that I knit myself, but actually I have several pieces that either my sister knit or a good friend of mine who used to be my colleague, she made several things for me or she knitted or crocheted things that she later gave to me. Um, so I might start wearing these on my next uh, podcast episodes um, and show you. Okay, on to the things I knitted last week. Um, I have one finished object that you have seen before and three very tiny ones that you haven't seen. So my first finished object for today are my sneaker socks. Um, that's the pair of socks where I knit just a very short leg and then I did the heel and then I knit it short rows here so that the um, the socks are supposed to stay up better than if you just start knitting in the round at once and um, yeah and I can't wait to wash them and wear them and see if it worked out um, the way they're supposed to but um, just from the way they look I'm really happy with them they're very different because I just continued knitting with the yarn the way it came from the ball I didn't um, go to the I didn't try to match the colors in the yarn to get to socks that look the same but I really like these um, different socks knit from the same yarn so you know they go together uh, I did contrast color heel and toe which I really like um, yeah and I have these nice sock blockers by Daniela's Daniela's Wolltopf um, I will link her shop underneath the video um, I'm not quite sure whether these sh she ships internationally but if you're in Germany and um, you can order them at her shop yep so these are the the, um, this is the finished object that you've seen before and the other things that I knitted last week um, that's the one pattern that I've designed that I've actually managed to write down and that's available as a download on Ravelry so far it's only available in German but I am working on an English translation and now that I'm showing um, these things on the English video as well I really have to sit down and write the English translation so the German name for these is Glitzer Spiralkugel, which means something like glittery spiral ball. And originally it was meant as a Christmas tree decoration. I knit them a bit bigger, the first few I knitted, but then I made tiny ones as earrings and I made a medium sized one as a pom pom on a hat. And um, I'm sure you can think of other things where you can use these little balls. And they're fairly easy to knit. I've recorded a tutorial video on how to knit them um, and that's where I knit this one. So I knit most of that in front of the camera so you can watch me knit this up. And the reason I did that is um, that I took the pattern and changed it a bit and I knit a Easter egg decoration. So it's basically the same pattern with a few changes to, um, so that it isn't ball shaped but it gets this egg shape and what I've done is I've put a plastic egg that you can buy. I put that in here so I just put the knitting around and um, so that was my prototype to figure out how many stitches and rows I needed and then I knit another one and I made a video um, showing how I knit these. Um, so if you wanted to have a knitted Easter decoration um, you could get the pattern on Ravelry and you can look at the video if you want to and you can knit some knitted Easter eggs. <laughs> I used um, sock yarn, Opal sock yarn with a bit of glitter in it you can use any sock yarn you want. You could even use um, a cotton yarn or different yarn. The only thing you have to make sure is if the um, 
If your gauge is different, you might need a different number of stitches and rows to get this size if you use the plastic eggs or if you have different size plastic eggs or if you just want to put um, normal stuffing in there, you can knit any that size you want and just uh, fill it with, with um, some stuff to fill it with. <laughs> okay, so that's my knitted Easter eggs. That's all my finished objects um, for this week. Um, as for the works in progress, if you have watched my other videos, you know I have a lot of works in progress every week. And last week, I, there's three projects that I did not work on. So I did not work on the stockings. I did not work on the hood of my hooded jacket that I've been knitting on forever. And I did not knit on the lace scarf that I'm knitting out of um, Voldackel yarn. Um, I was just too busy with other stuff and with my other projects, so I didn't get to knit on these. But what I did manage to knit on is my uh, cotton yarn socks. So that's Opal sock yarn with some um, cotton in it. And I am knitting another pattern that I made up myself. And um, I've started writing it down, so that's supposed to be a pattern someday. I've also put the notes of how to knit this on my Ravelry page, but that's also only in German. If you can read German, it's not complicated, you can knit it. But uh, one day I want to put it down in a proper pattern and, uh, and then also translate into English. So um, I put the first sock, this is the second sock. So I finished the heel on the second sock, now I just need to knit the foot and the toe. But I put the first one on a sock blocker, so um, you can see the pattern a bit more nicely. So it's just a rib, two by two rib, and then within the knit two column I just put um, some eyelets. Very simple pattern, I guess a lot of you could just knit it by looking at it. Um, I really like the yarn, it's very nice and colourful and again the socks are going to be very different because um, I started at a different point in the colour sequence and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing these. That's my cotton socks um, and then, yeah, I didn't knit on the stockings but I started a new pair of socks. Um, and I'm knitting these out of Opal Winterspiele Extra Large. So that's, um, it's called eight ply in German. And what it means is it's double as thick as the four ply sock yarn that you usually knit with. Um, I think it's either worsted or Aran weight yarn in English. Um, the nice thing is you don't need too many stitches. This is going to be a men's sock, German size 45, which is quite big. Um, but this is how far as I got. I've done the heel. I'm now knitting the foot. And it's quite a, diff quite a change for me to be knitting these big socks because I only wear German size 37. So that's a lot smaller than this. But um, yeah, that's why I'm using this thick yarn so it doesn't take me forever to finish these socks. But the color is really nice, nice blue and wintry, um, and I enjoy knitting these. That's all the socks I'm knitting at the moment. I have several pairs planned, but um, I have to see when I get around to starting the next pair. Um, I have then added two squares on my memory blanket. Um, it's still small enough to go on screen, I think. Yeah. So I added the green square. Um, I knit a pair of green socks to be donated um, for women with ovarian cancer. And I also knit the rock solid socks and green. this green was one of the colors that I knit in that um, pair of socks. So that's what that reminds me of. And then I started on this side. I knitted this square and I knit a pair of socks last year for my mother-in-law. Um, yeah, 
So now I'm going to add these four squares and then my blanket will be a square again and then I'll start at the edges again and I add squares here and here and um, yeah little by little it's growing into a blanket. Then I knit on my kangaroo shorts. The pattern is called Kangarots and as I don't have as many projects to show you this week I thought um, I might show you what it's going to look like when it's finished because some of you may not know the pattern. Um, it's out of the book West Knits Best Knits by Stephen West and this is this is uh, his kangaroos and his kangaroo lover. I already knit the pullover um, one or two years ago and now I'm knitting the matching shorts, kangaroos. And um, this is the schematic. So it's a front and a back that are the same and then you do the waistband and then the orange bits in his version, they're going to be dark blue in my version. So here's another picture. So as you can see, his upper part is quite long and the legs aren't quite as long. But um, as always with knitting, you can do, everyone can do what they want. So this is the front of my shorts. And I did try and knit this up a bit quite long, but then I knit the the legs almost as long. So I think it's just, it's about two or four rows difference. Um, but this seemed to be a good length for me. And um, these are the colors that I did for the front part. And it's the same colors that I used on the front of my pullover. And, and this is the back. So you can see the colors next to each other. I'm using DK weight sock yarn held double. And one color I used for both front and back and then the, the second color is, is a different color for the for um, the two parts and this is the back as I said and I finished the first leg and I think I've I don't know if I've mentioned it last week but I've decided that for the second leg I'm not going to use exactly the same colors but um, I will not use the blue that I've used for both front and back, but I will just double the other color. So the one with the green and the red in it and the blue as well. And um, just to have a bit more variation in my trousers. Um, yeah, so next week I'll show you what that looks like and if it makes a big difference or not, I don't know yet. Um, because in the pullover, I don't think I ever used that color uh, doubled in itself. Um, um, at some point I'll show you the pullover again um, or you can go back to the episode where I wore it and then um, you can see what that looked like. Yeah, so that's the kangaroos. One leg finished, one to go. Then I am crocheting. I did some crochet. I'm taking part in the Carnaby crochet along from from the magazine Simply Crochet. And um, the first version I'm crocheting is with DK weight sock yarn in neon colors. But because I can't continue crocheting because I have to wait for the next issue, um, I decided to do the same pullover again with cotton yarn and completely different colors. So last week I showed you this. This is part three of the crochet along. And last week I crocheted those two and they are part two of the crochet along. So that was um, the pattern in the February issue of Simply Crochet. And now I still need to do the first um, part in these colors. And then I have both jumpers. I've Then I've crocheted all three parts of both jumpers. And then in April, when the next issue um, is published, then I can crochet the blue cotton one and the neon sock yarn one. Yep, so still enjoy the pattern. It's quite crazy, quite colorful, but I like it. I love these colors. Um, 
But I will have to wait until October to finish the whole thing because every month we just get a little part of the pattern. Yep, so that's that. Um, as I am talking about crochet alongs, I can talk about the knit along as well. Um, I told you last week I started knitting the knit along by Arnie and Carlos and they um, come up with a pattern every day from Monday to Friday uh, in a two color for a two color piece to knit. And I've decided to do the double knitting version. That was the first day. And this is the second pattern that they published. And I had done half of this last week. So I finished this square and I did a third one. So I'm really way behind. So this is Wednesday of their first week, which is I think two weeks ago. And, um, and it's going longer than for two weeks. Um, at first I thought they were, they were only in quarantine for two weeks, but it seems they have to stay home longer. And um, so I think there will be more patterns coming up. So this is my third square. And these are both Opal, Opal DK weight sock yarns. One is black and the other has these red and blue colors. And this is two stitches too small because I, um, for some reason, I got the number mixed up and I cast on two stitches too few. And because it's not obvious with this pattern, I didn't count it. I just looked at how to start. Um, and I only noticed I had the wrong number of stitches when I was in this row and I just didn't feel like starting over. So I, um, I left off two stitches or one stitch on either side so that's why the pattern goes rather far to the side and it's a bit wider than than this pattern but I thought it doesn't matter I still don't know what it's going to be because it's a mystery knit along um, but I'm sure those two stitches will be fine especially as um, the first two squares aren't quite the same size I don't know why the first one is the biggest and the second and third even though they're two stitches different they seem to be quite the same size. No idea what happened. Maybe it's the gauge. Maybe it's the fact that I used a different yarn. Could be a bit of both. I don't know. So these are the th three squares that I've knit so far from Anna and Carlos's knit along. Everybody can still join if you want. If you look uh, on YouTube, you can find the videos by Anna and Carlos or you can go on their website and there you can find the pattern for free and you can still join. Then I won't be the last one to finish. <laughs> okay, what else? I continued knitting on the test knit I'm doing for Yuki Knits, her beautiful two color brioche cowl. Um, I didn't get quite as far as I wanted, but I finished the first part of the pattern. So this is the part where you get those funny round thingies and um, and I finished all four of them and now the pattern shifts so um, it looks different <laughs> and then at the end there'll be something different again and I'd hope to um, start with the the second part but I didn't get around to doing that so that's what I will be showing you next week um, I'm using opal sock yarn with silk and one hand painted opal yarn that I got as a present uh, in the December package of the subscription two years ago, I think. But it's something you can't order as far as I know. But I really like the way the colors go together. I still enjoy the knitting. Um, I realized if I knit that too late at night, I make stupid mistakes and it's... Uh, no fun undoing that <laughs> but uh, I think I fixed all the mistakes I made because I was too tired and everything should be should be running smoothly from now on yeah so what else have I got I've got my pullovers uh, or my pullover and my jacket so I am knitting the raglano a pattern by Nicolor um, 
that's a raglan pullover top down you can use any weight yarn you want you just have to knit a gauge swatch and you have to measure your favorite pullover and then you can knit this um, pattern with any yarn and any pattern you like i just did stockinette for the beginning then i um, chose a pattern from the japanese stitch dictionary japanese japanese stitch bible i think it's called um, i picked this uh, pattern with a bit of lace and a bit of knit pearls and um, yeah I've um, added a bit can't really tell the difference easily but um, I think I've added one or two more pattern repeats I've changed the needle size to one size bigger so I knit most of the pullover in on a four millimeter needle and I've changed to a 4.5 millimeter needle just to make sure that it have a bit of an A-line at the bottom of the pullover because it's fairly long and it's supposed to go um, down to my thigh and I don't want it too tight there. So um, yeah, I've changed needle size and I have decided that I am only going to, let me see. Yeah, I'm going to start the last pattern repeat now with the lace pattern and then um, instead of doing this um, mix of garter and stockinette stitch I would just do a few rounds of garter stitch um, and then bind off. On my sleeves I did five garter ridges but in the pattern it's only three so I'm thinking that for the front and back I will just do the three garter ridges that are in the pattern. It should be enough for it not to roll and um, and I think it should be long enough then. And then the only thing that I still need to do is pick up stitches for the neckline. I will do a garter edge here as well, just for it to match the other edges. And um, yeah, maybe I can finish that until next week. And then, um, yeah, I think what I'd like to do is if I manage to finish it, I can show you what it looks like finished, but not washed and blocked. And then maybe, um, the week after I can show you what it looks like when it's washed and blocked and maybe I'll wear it if it's still cold enough and if not I'll just show it off as a finished object yeah so that's my raglano um, I'm knitting that as part of a knit along that's um, being hosted in my Ravelry group and my YouTube channel so you you can still join if you want to. Everybody can um, still show their pictures of what they're knitting and what they're deciding to do. Um, yeah, which reminds me, I still haven't opened an English speaking thread on my in my Ravelry group. I, if I don't forget, I'll do that this week. So the other knit along that I'm only taking part in that I'm not hosting is for the Hitofude jacket, a Japanese pattern where you can knit a jacket in one with one piece of thread you never have to cut the yarn you can if, if your ball is big enough which mine is it's a Wollmeise lace 300 grams ball um, and yeah, it's a very clever pattern I knit it before years ago but uh, then I used lots of balls because I had 50 gram balls but now I have this beautiful yarn and I want to knit it in one go so I only have two ends to weave in the beginning and the end piece and I have finished the sleeves so I started off knitting it as a rectangle and I did 14 pattern repeats for my size it was supposed to be 12 but I didn't want them didn't want the sleeves too tight and the yarn is a bit finer than what is recommended in the pattern so I knit a few more pattern repeats and also I did long sleeves um, I added I think three pattern repeats to the cast on on both sides and it was a provisional cast on that was then undone and then you can knit the two sleeves together and then you end up with stitches in the round and doesn't really look a lot like a jacket right now but this is what it's supposed to look like and I have the sleeves and this is part of the back and part of the neckline and once I finished the ribbing 
I can cast off a few stitches and I will increase some stitches and then I can knit down the front and back. So I hope by next week I will have started the fronts and backs and I can show you what that looks like. And um, yeah, and then I can continue knitting. I still love the yarn and the color. Colors are a lot more beautiful in real life than they are on screen. But I think even like that, it doesn't look too bad. So that's my Hitofure cardigan. Um, what else have I got? I think that is all that I knit and crocheted on last week. So as I said, a few of my uh, projects are missing because I didn't get round to knitting on them last week. Um, there's one project that I want to start that I want to, um, I wanted to tell you about last week I forgot so I decided I have to start knitting it so I won't forget this week but I didn't get around to starting it but I brought the um, yarn that I want to use and I wrote down the name of the pattern uh, so I can tell you about it. The yarn I want to use is this Opal Glitter Sock Yarn. It's a really old um, ball of yarn. I have no idea when I bought it um, but as I'm a lot more at home at the moment and not in my shop I I'm trying to knit more from my stash and not just always pick the newest uh, colors that are in my shop and so I've decided uh, for this pattern I could use this yarn that I've had for years and I'll be really happy to to be knitting it to be using it and the pattern I want to knit is called don't touch your face and it's also by Nicolo it's the same designer who designed the um, Raglano, the raglan pullover I'm knitting and she designed the it's a cowl um, and she designed it in cooperation with several German hand dyers who are selling special colorways to knit into this project if you want to you can buy the yarn and knit whatever you want but if you buy these special colorways they donate money to a organi German organization called Die Tafel who give food to the needy. So people who can't afford to buy food and especially in these crazy times where lots of people have lots of problems, um, I think they're needed more than ever. But the problem is they usually get food from the big supermarkets uh, or from shops. Um, and as some of the shops have closed, it's harder for them to get food to give on to the um, to people in need. And so um, Nicolò and those hand dyers decided they want to help. And um, the pattern is for free, but you can buy the yarn and uh, they will donate some of the money to this organization. But um, the, the idea behind the name, Don't Touch Your Face, is that if you pull up the loop over your face, it's supposed to help you remember not to touch your face because that's one of the rules that they set if you um, to not get an infection. She says if you pull something knitted over your face, it won't stop the viruses either going out or coming in. So it's not a medical help or something, but it's just for you to remember to um, not touch your face. And even if you wear a face mask, you could put the knitted thing on top and it would look nicer I think than this face mask yeah so that's what I want to do and what I want to wear in these crazy times there's also there are also patterns on Ravelry for knitted or crocheted face masks which I think are a good idea even if they don't really help against a virus it's the same idea as with the loop you won't touch your face as much and uh, if you knit like a double layer at least some of the if you cough or sneeze, some of the um, moisture will be help, help back and you can help not infect other people. Yeah, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching my knitted and crocheted things grow and I hope you are well. I hope you find some time to knit and crochet and do something you like and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!